What is up guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another exciting episode of Yak Pack Outdoors. And in today's episode, this is gonna be episode number 12 of the 30 day video challenge. Okay, excuse me, cause it's a little windy today. You know, can't really control that. You guys know where we're at. So we're at the pool right now. What are we doing? Okay, just like what you read in the title. What do topwater baits actually look like underwater? And why do fish love them so much? So we're gonna find out today. What we're gonna be using, we're gonna be using a popping frog, a regular frog, a spook, and a buzz bait. So the reason we're using a popping frog, there's two reasons behind it. That is my favorite kind of frog to use. I would rather use that than a regular frog. And reason number two, I don't have a popper. Well, I don't have one with me. Okay, anyways. All right guys, check it out. If this is the first video that you're ever seeing of Yak Pack Outdoors, number one, welcome. I am TJ, I'm your host of Yak Pack Outdoors. You can now become a Yak Packer for free, right? All you have to do is thumb punch with your left or the right thumb, doesn't matter because it's free. Thumb punch that red subscribe button, okay? Turn that notification bell on, that way you can be notified every single time I upload a video. All right, one last thing and then we'll get started. If you're new here, again, I like to ask a question of the day every single day before every video. And basically it, it helps me to get to know you guys and it, it helps you guys get to know me. So the question of the day for today's episode is, what is your favorite lure that you've ever lost? My answer will be down in the comments below. Go ahead and put yours down there as well because I absolutely love hearing from you guys. Like, you know, all these different questions that I ask all the time. I mean, I get so many answers from you guys and it's just crazy. Like, I absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, what is your favorite lure that you've ever lost? That is the question for today. Like I said, put yours in the comments down below. Mine will be down there as well. Without further ado, we're gonna start with the popping frog. Let's go. All right, first up, like I said, we have a live target popping frog. Now, again, the reason that I like to use a popping frog is you can do more things with it. You can pop it versus not being able to pop a regular frog. So that's my, that's my theory behind that. Um, let's see what this looks like. So the water displacement on a, on a popping frog versus a regular frog is just so much better in my opinion. And you're looking for that. That's what you're looking for, that water displacement. When you pop that frog, it's, it's spitting that water. And um, it, it, that, that's going to create a different noise as well. So again, attracting those fish, making them react to it. That's what these topwater baits are. They're our, uh, topwater lures are. They're, they're reaction style baits. All right. All right, so uh, I had to adjust the camera angle really quick for you guys down there under the water. Uh, again, the reason that I like using popping frogs versus these right here, these uh, the regular frogs. Now, don't don't get me wrong; these do serve a purpose, and as of recent, I've been catching a lot of fish on these. And you can catch a lot of fish on these. Not saying you can't. It's just my personal preference is to use the popping style versus the regular style. And like. Like I just pointed out, it's, it's more water displacement. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut this live target off and then we're gonna tie on this Booyah regular frog, this pad crasher, and we're gonna see the difference. All right, comparison, basically, side by side. We're gonna get to see what a popping frog looks like and this looks like underwater, what the fish are gonna see. So let's get that cut off. Let's tie this on, let's get her shot. All right, so we're tied up, ready to go with the regular frog. I know some of you are probably thinking like, this guy's insane, this guy's crazy. Why has he got a frog? on floor carbon line. This is not a in real life situation. I would never fish a frog on floor carbon. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, as a matter of fact, I asked a question of the day uh, about a week ago and I asked when people fish top water, no matter what kind of top water it is, what kind of line do they prefer? And actually a lot of people said mono for poppers and whatnot, but a uh, braid for frogs and buzz baits and anything bigger or anything heavier, bulkier or something like that. But just a, uh, just, this is the rod and reel that I grabbed, so we're doing it with fluorocarbon right now. And uh, let's see what this looks like. All right, so we're just gonna get him out there. We're just gonna walk him back. So this is how you guys are getting to see right now. This is how I fish a frog in South Florida because you don't have to fish a frog down there as slow as, for example, when I lived in North Carolina and fished frogs, there's, I don't have to fish it as slow. In North Carolina, it would be like a, uh, almost like a pop, pop, pause. Wait a couple seconds, pop, pop, pause. And Florida, like South Florida where I'm at, they just want you to basically reel it in. So you guys are basically gonna get to see the action of how I fish a frog. Now, take into account what I just said. If you have to fish slower, then just kind of picture that in your head of, of the footage that you're getting to see today. Basically, when I fish a frog in South Florida, I am just popping the rod tip, not even cr like walking the dog, not even creating a walking the dog effect. I'm just popping the rod tip and reeling at the same time. All right, one more time with the uh, with the booyah pad crasher. That's what it looks like. 
from underwater. We'll pause it right there in front of the camera. All right. Can't really tell you what that looked like under the water, but I can tell you from above the water, it didn't look good. But it doesn't matter because I've caught plenty of five pounders just last week doing exactly that. All right, guys, we've uh, untied and retied. Right now, we've got the uh, the Hedden Spook Junior, right? This is my all-time favorite spook and spook color, right? So, realistically, I would like to change the hooks out on this. I do not have one of the uh, the O-ring splitters, if that's what they're called. If I think I think that's right. I don't have one of those, so I just haven't changed the hooks out on this yet. I usually put, you know, the same size hooks on them, two or three. Either, a, I don't know, Mustad or Gamakatsu, doesn't matter. But the bone color head and spook has caught more fish for me, you know, whether they be four pounders or half pounders. Uh, this has caught more fish for me than any other color spook that I've used. So the bone color being my favorite, let's see. I'm, I'm really excited to see this one because this is a walk the dog bait. I mean, the better you can walk the dog with this thing, the better you can make it look. All right, so let's get her out here. Let's give her a shot. Now this one may look a little different because the skies are kind of gray right now and this is a bone color. All right, we're gonna give this one a couple of tries just to get the best. I hit the concrete right there, but just to get the best. So when you walk this thing, you wanna walk it with slack line. You don't wanna to try to reel fast and, and walk it on tight line because if that's the case, all you're gonna be doing is just pulling it forward. I'll actually give you guys an example of that right here. If you try to just, well, yeah, that didn't work like I wanted it to. Basically, if you try to reel too fast, what's going to happen is this. It's kind of going to go side to side, but not near as much as you want it to. It's going to just go straight. All right, one more time with this, and then we're going to switch it up to my all-time favorite topwater bait. And you can hear those those little BBs inside of that, and that's gonna drive those fish even more crazy. Topwater baits, guys, those are your reaction style baits. If, if, it, if it lands on a fish's head, 99% of the time it's gonna bite it, just because it's like, hey, what's this easy meal in front of my face? So, it's gonna bite. But let's uh, let's go ahead and switch up to the buzz bait, all right? Guys, I'm excited for this one. The buzz bait, all-time favorite. All right, guys, we are having a uh, an issue with the buzz bait right now. I'm about to go get my uh, top water, my actual top water rod to see if it's the line that's making the difference. But one thing that I want to point out to you guys, actually we'll make it two things. This is what I like to do with my buzz baits, okay? So when I get a new buzz bait, right, no, no matter where it's from, whatever, I will be driving home and I will grab it, you know, right here. H however you can grab this thing and hold on to it good, or even if you have to hold on to it like this, it doesn't matter. Hold it out of the window of your car, right? And let this thing like let it do its thing, you know? So when you're doing that, you're basically breaking it in because right now, just throwing it in this pool, I can see that this buzz bait, I just took it out of the pack. Look, I just took it out of the pack, guys, so it's not broke in by any means. But I'm gonna see if it's actually this fluorocarbon line and with this stretch in it uh, that's causing that. I'm gonna go grab my topwater uh, rod and reel really quick. I'll be right back. Let's hope that's the issue. If not, then I'm gonna have to run down the road and break this thing in. All right, guys, so if you're not new here to this channel, then you know, this is the meat stick. This is my top water uh, rod and reel combo. Shimano Corrado K, 7.4 to 1 gear ratio. I wish I had got the 8 to 5 because I want a, a lot faster of a reel so I can get that in. You know, you catch fish off anything on the top. Then I got a 7.3 medium heavy, 13 fish and fate black. It's got a very stiff tip on it, and that is the reason why I like using this specific rod rather than like a heavy or an extra heavy. I don't feel like you need all that. That's just my personal opinion, though. But we're going to tie this buzz bait on really quick, and we're going to hope that it was the line causing the issue. Let's get it tied on. All right, y'all, so for the sake of me saving you guys some time, what I did is I bent this out a little bit more. I bent it out like that a little bit more uh, because what it's gonna do is it's gonna run like this in the water. It's gonna run like that. It's supposed to run like that. Okay, and I really, I, I, I feel like the, uh, the line might be getting in the way, so we're gonna deal with that, okay? But I have got it to run a couple times pretty smooth. So I'm gonna run this as much as I can for you guys to get the best noise out of it, if you will. So let's give this a couple tries. Yeah, see, it's 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 that this line is getting in the way, and I'm not sure what the. See, it's not even it won't even run right. What is going on here? I don't I don't understand. I don't understand, Buzz Bait. I don't get you. What's going on? All right, this is a common problem. 
See, I can't even get this thing to run right, guys. This is a problem that I always have when I, you know, take a buzz bait straight out of the pack, so. There we go. There's. Basically, I'm having to reel this thing 10 times faster than I normally would. And it's just not clacking like it's supposed to. But I'm sure you guys can hear that really well, especially on the GoPro, because that's going to be really loud underwater. Oh my goodness, this is, this is aggravating, guys. I can't get it to run right. There we go. That's how we want it to run. Yeah, so, I mean, just having to burn it in, guys, you know, it's, it's aggravating, but you guys are getting to see in here. Oh, yeah. That's perfect right there. That's perfect. So, basically, that's what that's exactly, you know, what you want to do when you, when you get a, a new buzz bait. You want to break it in because if you don't, you're going to have this issue right here. And I'm glad I was able to show you guys that today and actually take you through and not cut this part of the video out. I'm glad I was able to show you guys. You know, the prime example of what you should do with your buzz baits. See, it's, I'm, gonna, I'm legitimately gonna, before I ever use this thing in real life, I'm gonna have to, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to absolutely break this thing in because I'm not fixing to go out to the lake and, or to the pond or whatever the case is, and I'm not fixing to use this if it's gonna act like this. Yeah. All right, well, that should be enough, uh, enough video for you guys to have seen. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. It was definitely something different. I have actually never seen a video like this comparing four of the most popular topwater baits, you know, minus the popper. That's why we replaced it with the popping frog. Uh, similar effect, I think a popper is, is still a little bit better because you get more displacement out of it. But that's uh, neither here nor there. Anyways, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, do not forget, thumb punch that red subscribe button, okay? Turn that notification bell on, right? Hit this, hit the like, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I mean, why, why not? If you liked it, it's free. Hit the thumbs up. It, uh, it helps me, and I greatly appreciate it, every last one of you. And with that being said, guys, uh, again, thank you. Thank you so much for watching uh, this video and all the other videos, and thanks for the support throughout this 30-day challenge. Uh, you know, I'm in the Army, married, got two kids, so 30 days straight of videos. You know, it, it's a challenge. It's a grind. And, but that's, you know, that's why I call it the 30-day challenge. But uh, it, it's been a blast. I've absolutely loved every bit of it. Um, can't thank you guys enough. Thank you again for watching, and we'll catch y'all next time.